Welcome to another video. Today I'll teach you how to do imaging in a relatively advanced way. I already recommended the camera that I use. Again, $50 for a 4K camera. You can check the link over there. I have to say immediately it's not ideal for the planets because it captures with a compression. If you want to capture without compression, you really need to spend hundreds of dollars and up to you. Now capturing, of course, is easiest to do it with the cell phone, but if you do it with the cell phone, you're pretty much limited to the moon. Because look at these pictures that I took with my cell phone of the planets. Not pretty, not pretty. <laughs> so to step up on that game, you really need to use a dedicated astronomical web camera. Again, ideally without compression, but I didn't want to spend so much money. That's why I'm using what I have. Okay, step number one, you really need to do some complex planning before you go out there imaging. The planets, they are changing their distance from the Earth all the time. It's not the same distance. Here on this nice little web, you can see when each planet will be closest to Earth. And by each planet, basically, I just mean Jupiter, Saturn and Mars every two years. All the other planets are basically just dots and Venus is just a big white light bulb. <laughs> yeah, not much to take care about. Next, of course, the most important thing of capturing details on the planets is your telescope. The bigger the aperture, the better. Here, the Opsonians are really nice. And for this, of course, you will need also an EQ platform. You might want to check the video where I teach you how to construct an EQ platform. Because tracking without a platform and capturing a planner under high magnification while it is possible to do it manually, I've done it in the past, it's very, very, very difficult and very annoying. Spend a lot of time hunting for that planet and keeping it you know, on top of that uh, camera sensor. The next most important thing is the seeing. Here I recommend going to Meteo Blue, checking their astronomy forecast and making sure that the index of seeing for both of these is at least 3, 4, 5, and of course, the sync, it should be below one arc seconds. Unfortunately, where I live, this is uh, almost never the case. And in that case, again, the quality of your images will suffer greatly. Also, collimation, it has to be absolutely perfect. So before you capture any images, you need to spend a lot of time learning about collimation, having the right tools and spending quite some time making sure that the collimation of your telescope is in perfect shape. Okay, now that you have your plan, you want to go out, you want to do capture of the planet. Again, you have to keep in mind there are three steps in capturing one single image of a planet. First is the capture of the data. This is where the real astronomy happens. This is where you go outside, get the perfect scene, get the perfect weather and capture some data. The capture of the data here is done through thousands of small pictures called frames, which is nothing else but capturing a video. Now let me take you on the journey of how exactly this happens. Let's see what are some of the pros, cons, what are some of the great experiences, what are some of the disappointments of, all of this entire process. A few weeks ago, I captured Jupiter for the first time this year in my 12 inch while it was almost in a position. And this is how it went. Step number one, put the platform on the ground, motors facing north, pivot facing south. Step number two, of course, put the telescope on the platform. It is minus one degrees, but I'm in a big hurry because the red dot will be gone in about half an hour. I want to catch the red dot. And that, my friends, right there, the bright dot, that is Jupiter. And we will be catching it today, including the red dot. Now today we have to use also the fan. That's great that the GSO has a fan. So because we want to cool the mirror as soon as possible so we can start shooting within 45 minutes. It should be cooled enough. Now you can see I have this mask. This is to help shield all the stupid lights I have around me. I mean, look at this thing. It's like a freaking airport. But we do what we have to do. Okay, time to get a visual confirmation of Jupiter. I haven't seen it in a year. <laughs> Very excited. I'll be using my zoom. Nothing too fancy. That's why a zoom is a great thing for these quick and 
dirty observations just to make sure it's there, just to make sure the telescope is collimated before I collimate it precisely. Let's give it a try. There it is. Shooting through my cell phone. It is there, but the mirror is not cooled yet, so it's quite, quite blurry. Yay! Meantime, seeing doesn't matter for Orion. Let's have a look at Orion. Orion with a 12 inch that's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> even surrounded by all of these lights, even by this airport. Orion is just amazing. If you have a chance, you have to look at Orion through, through a 12 inch. Worth the money just for the Orion Nebula. Let's try a UHC filter. Okay, using my 82 degrees Max Vision 11 mm with a new AC filter, and it's yeah, it's like a picture. <laughs> really, really, really nice. And my eyes are not even dark adapted. I can't imagine what it will be like once I get it outside of the city and get some dark adaptation going on. Should be even better. Okay, let's check Jupiter again. Then maybe do some collimation, and we are going to get the imaging session started. A lot, lot better. The mirror has cooled down, no more microcurrents to such an extent. Jupiter is very bright. This is where a polarizing filter could be very helpful. I will cover collimation sooner or later, <coughs> probably later, but I'm using a laser collimator. Very fast. Collimation is almost perfect. You see, this telescope, the fixed tube, holds collimation very, very, very well. That's why I bought a fixed tube. Okay, so with the camera, it's pretty straightforward. You put in UV infrared filter we put the adapter and basically it's like an eyepiece I have to use this big adapter because of lack of back focus on my telescope anyway that's a long story there you go the cameras in there just like an eyepiece I'm using it without any Barlow it will be imaging directly on the focal plane the reason for that is because this camera is 4k has a very very small uh, pixel size and I'm using a sampling rate which is three times the pixel size. The recommended one is five. We'll try with a 1.5 barrel as well and see which one is better. It depends a lot on the sink. If the sink is not good then you don't have to sample too high. Let's see. There it is. That's a live feed of Jupiter. A bit overexposed. Need to fix it a little bit. Get the focus right and we are ready to go. Yeah, we can see it's not Rocket science, you put, you plug the camera into the laptop and off we go, sharp cup 2.9, I'll cover the details later. Okay, so getting the right exposure is real simple. You basically turn it up and down until you get a histogram around, come on, around 60, see? This, now it's perfect. Now we just need to make sure that the focus is right. So we are going to zoom in and get the focus right. Meantime, you can check the settings that I'm using for this. Yeah. Of course, depending on the camera that you have, it will be very different for you. But I think it's okay. It will not be the, my best picture. The sync is not great, but at least I finally got Jupiter with my 12 inch in opposition. Jupiter is right now in opposition. It's the biggest it will ever be. Here's the thing, Jupiter rotates very, very, very quickly. That's why every capture should be a maximum of about three minutes, otherwise it will introduce smearing. To prevent that, you need to use Win Jupos, which is a lot of work. I used it once and I'm never using it again. <laughs> now I'm also capturing with 1.5 Barlow. It's bigger, but I don't know if it's sharper or there are more details. Not that many. I mean, the platform is working just amazing, even in minus 2 degrees. If you haven't checked my videos of making yourself a platform, you need to check it out. Absolutely amazing. And the planet nicely stays in the frame, even at this amazing magnification. Right now we are around 400 magnification, if I'm not mistaken. Enough about Jupiter, let's try Mars. Even though Mars is not the closest right now, it will be in opposition in two months. But let's give it a try. I have not done Mars in two years with any telescope. Very curious to see how the 12 inch fares. Okay, you see it? We got ourselves a nice red planet. That's Mars. Wow, can't wait to get the picture of this one. I mean, look, the sink is pretty bad here. Mars is far, but yeah. I'm not expecting much from this. 
It's half past midnight. Very cold, very late. Need to wake up tomorrow. Jupiter, one last time. Go to sleep. Mission complete. Now, as you might imagine, spending few hours in the freezing cold, being so excited to finally take my 12 inch with Jupiter, getting home the next day, spending few hours on my laptop, processing these images and discovering results which are not much better than your typical potato. Yeah, it's uh, moments like this which really, really make me hate imaging with a passion. I am, and I'm like, why am I even doing this? <laughs> I could have spent that time, I don't know, playing video games or maybe watching Orion the entire time and I would have, would have had a much better experience than these potato pictures. What can you do? Astronomy, as they say, is a hobby of uh, passion and patience. I had no other choice but to take what, ha what I had learned, wait a few weeks and try again. So, December 26, I'm giving it one more try. Jupiter almost in a position, Mars also pretty good. I'm going outside of the city. Check this out. I think I have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers of clothing. <laughs> cold outside. Really excited, finally, after two months of cloudy weather, of crappy weather, finally it's pretty clear outside. It's hazy, it's cold, but uh, what can you do? Uh, it's never perfect. <laughs> the seeing also, it's pretty average, as you can see, uh, that's a screenshot of currently what the seeing is at. But Jupiter is almost in a position, Mars is almost in a position, it's as good as going, it's going to get this year. The 26th of December, so we are all hoping for a nice Christmas Exit present. Right. The unicorn does it again. <laughs> nice navigation, eh? Of my daughter. We are hoping for a nice Christmas present in the form of nice seeing, clear weather. It's very cold. As I said, I have seven layers of clothes on me. I have also USB heated pads to keep me warm with my big USB bank. Yeah, hopefully I survive. You know, people forget one thing. Astronomy is actually pretty intensive outdoor sport. You're gonna get very cold, very uncomfortable, and success is not guaranteed. I have no idea if today the imaging that we are going to do is not going to be a major waste of time. It can very easily happen. You spend hours of imaging, you go home, you put the video to some processing, you get the whole workflow and you end up literally with a potato instead of Jupiter. Yeah, literally. Sometimes I'm like, I could have just taken a photo of a potato and it would have had more details than Jupiter tonight. Let's see, let's see. 15 more minutes, I'll be arriving there. I won't be alone. With my small group, we are having a small Christmas star party. Should be pretty good. My friend, he's very excited. He got his Sky Rover 30 millimeter for Christmas. He can't wait to see it. I've been telling him so much about that eyepiece. It's really, really good. And I think he won't be disappointed in his uh, 10 inch. The mirror is 10 degrees Celsius. And uh, temperature outside is about zero, minus two. Something like that. If I measure my car, it's about zero degrees. So I have to get the mirror 10 degrees colder before I can even think about imaging anything. My heating is up and running, maximum temperature. So I'm hoping to keep me warm for at least three hours. So again, I have set up the fan with the batteries. Now we wait for the temperature to reach the same as the environment. So we are set up and ready to go. In a couple of hours it should be ideal. Right now the mirrors are too hot for any imaging. And the planets are too high anyway. Okay. It's been almost an hour and a half and we are still not at equilibrium. Two, three degrees of difference. Close enough. 
starting the first capture. It is looking better than last time, but let's see what comes out in the end. Fingers crossed. It is tracking stably. Almost three minutes now. So far so good. Platform working perfectly. And there we have Mars already looking great even without processing. Minus two degrees, but it has been worth it. I'm absolutely freezing. My hands are freezing. <laughs> some hot coffee. It was well worth it. The seeing was great. I think I have some really, really nice pictures of Jupiter as well as Mars. Oof. So yeah, it was quite a lot of adventure. And when I came back home and started developing this, already uh, it was clear that they would be a lot better. To be honest, already on the spot, it was clear that I was capturing a lot more detail. And I couldn't be happier that now that I'm making this video, I'm discovering that the picture that I took is quite similar to this one. Here you can also see the shadow of Io. They were also lucky to have the red dot on the same side. This doesn't happen too often. The planet Jupiter is rotating very fast, so it's like a 50-50 chance that you're going to also capture the red dot. Either way, I was very happy. Other cool stuff you can do with this is that if you spend few hours processing few videos and few images and combine them together, you will find out that the planet has rotated in meantime and here you can clearly see the rotation. Mars, on the other hand, is quite difficult to capture because it comes around only every two years or so when it's closest to the Earth. If you capture it outside of that so-called opposition, it's basically just a red dot. Here you can see I clearly managed to capture the ice caps and some features on the ground. And it was not even that close to the planet. Now what it would take to take these images to the next level? I'm afraid we are talking about hundreds of dollars of investment. First, I would need a better camera with more frames per second, USB 3 and capturing especially without compressing the image. Second, because the planets here are not that high in the sky, I would need an ADC, atmospheric dispersal corrector, which is an extra optical piece, again costing over $100, which corrects for some of the shifts in colors in, uh, that are coming from the planet. And lastly, <laughs> I would probably need to move as well, because here the weather and the sink is really, really bad for capturing planets. I would ideally need to go somewhere where it's a lot better, a lot clearer, and spend a lot of time there, making sure to get that best picture during the time that the planet is closest to the Earth. Now, for those of you which want to do it yourself by using these applications, I'll go now to my laptop and show you directly with the screen share how to get that captured video into a really nice picture which is ready for display. Let's get to it.